Hello everybody. So I wanted to make a video really bad and I've been researching what I could possibly talk about that I know. And it came to me, U of T student struggles. I know about that. I just graduated in 2019 and it's still fresh in my mind and haunting me. Maybe forget that I just said haunting. But today I want to talk about five problems all throughout uh, this video in different locations. So at the same time, I'm showing you places that you can be at and you might want to visit and you know giving you a virtual tour this is a disclaimer that everything here is just my opinion and obviously everyone has their own experiences hello everybody so today i'm here at with uc as my backdrop because when people say tell me about uft or show me a picture of uft this is what i show this is the postcard of uft for me anyways because it's in the center of king's college circle Back there is Con Hall, where they for, where they filmed Mean Girls. She does, like there's a scene there that everybody knows. That's what we always talk about. And there's the scene tower. So I feel like this is as U of T as we can get. So what I want to talk about right now is about failure, 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 failure. And who am I to talk about failure? Well, I happen to be a winner at failing. Right off the bat, I want to say, um, if you are failing or doing horribly one of the struggles is being getting poor grades if that's what you that's if that's what you're facing right now and you're a student one thing you should know is that that's not a reflection of who you are that failure is just a failure it's not you you might have been working super hard and I know that and I, I, I really recognize that because I understand myself you might be working super hard more harder than the the person that's getting I don't know, B's, A's, whatever. I didn't even get B's, see? <laughs> I'm putting, putting that as a good grade. Um, but I graduated, so... Uh, I just wanna say, this is not about grades here. This is all politics. It's all about who, I don't know. It's just, it's, it, this, it's just made, so it's not a fair system. It's just all they want is majority of students to get around 60 so that they can be seen as a tough, rigorous student uh, school or whatever. Okay, so a couple things that I want you to know. I already said this, okay, I'm a kind of repetitive person. First, failure is not a reflective reflection of who you are. Ultimately, you just want to graduate. Trust me, all that's, that's all you need. I remember I was uh, like, during this horrible po point where I was in this class that was way like it was way over my head like I did not know what was going on most of the time even though I showed up to all the classes like I showed up to like it's just crazy I don't want to get into that one but I, I want I was stressing over it and I didn't even know it until I started thinking about the grander thing about life there's a bigger life out there you know that it's like me trying to tell you like you know that the, those stories are the saying oh someone telling a baby in the womb there's life after birth I'm trying to say there's life out outside the academic world and sometimes it's scary to embrace that because you feel like without an academic setting you have no structure and you fall apart because that's the only thing that give you a purpose before which is wrong if you can give yourself a chance to figure out who you are and I'll be talking about that in another point that your life is worth much more much more much more than the stupid grade is trust me like you just want to and ultimately at the end of the day get out get that undergrad like I, I have the degree somewhere sitting at home I, don't, I haven't even looked at it since I got it on the first day is it's it's what it is you know um, and I, I'm, I'm coming from a place where I failed so much and I panicked I lost hair because of it and I got like my body reacted horribly to stress and I, I used to deny it and say I'm like I'm not stressed I'm just trying to do well in school and I was killing myself. I even hated eating. I didn't want to eat anymore. I'm like, why am I wasting time eating? Why am I wasting time sleeping? Why am I could be studying? Obviously, throughout the years, I changed it up because I was trying to do adopt healthier study habits. But sometimes you might do, you may be doing your best and your best is not enough for the school. But your best is good for you. You know you did what you could and let's just leave it at that. Move on. If you fail, you should be like, oh, okay, I failed. What's next? I mean, that's what helped me get through it towards the end because if you dwell on it it's not like you can go back in the past you can only change the future you can't go back in the past the present right now is when you're feeling sad but the future has a chance of opportunity so long story short 
university is not much, under, especially undergrad. At the end of the day, they keep telling you how people did music and then they get into med school. Like, just, just do what you can with the grades you can. There are other ways. If you don't have grades, you find connections to get the careers that you're looking for, you know? Um, I make that sound easy. <laughs> but anyways, I, I'm talking too long. Let's just get to the next point. So for this next point, we're going to be at Victoria College, and you'll see why shortly. It's not that much of a significant factor. I'm just really trying to showcase the beautiful places in UFD at the same time. So the next point I want to talk about is money. Money is a big struggle for students, so we're almost always broke. We're almost broke, we're starving, and I don't have much to say about this advice-wise because I am still broke, but I can give some pointers. The first is, um, depending on your college, like here I'm in Victoria College, depending on your college, you might have funding available to you, um, and you want to use this funding. This is like an obvious point, you're like, duh, I should, um, but... I feel like a lot of us don't because the application is just a hectic mess and I hear that it's getting a little bit more complicated because with the new requirements needed for the following year or this year I guess so uh, funding is available but at the same time it's not because you have to either be really academically smart or part doing so much volunteer hours and everything which is sometimes not feasible for everybody. Sometimes we're just regular students doing nothing. There is, however, money for you. If you are poor, you get awarded that. But that, what they call it, is a bursary. And you can apply, but it's just so annoying. <laughs> what makes it annoying is, of the, I guess, few, I don't know how many there are nowadays, but of the few that I remember seeing, you really needed to know where your money disappeared to. So it's just... I guess it's a lot of it re requires a lot of money management on your end to know because as you're filling it out it makes you look richer than you actually are when you have zero dollars and it, you find out the calculation says you actually have two thousand dollars and so now you got to do some mystery like blues clues or whatever work you know it's kind of annoying um, but I guess it makes sense because it's a needs based and you need to show that you actually have a need for it. Um, and you need to write about it and show you just really need to prove your case is all I'm trying to say you have two options know how to budget money learning how to budget because I, I learned that a lot of us don't know how to budget money we don't know how to work with money and use it or handle it and the second thing is knowing what you have available to you knowing the resources you have available at the very least maybe like finding free food on campus and stuff that you don't have to pay for uh, maybe that's a separate topic, but there's not much that I can tell you about. So, I don't know what to say. Why I'm here at Victoria College is because of all the colleges, this is the one that I think has the most funding available to students, if that's something you want to know. But at the same time, you have to pay more tuition or more fees towards the colleges. So, you're paying more, but you're getting more I don't know. I, I was not a big student, but I hear it. You guys have a good. Oh my god, the, the statue scared me. I was like, who's sitting beside me? I have, I forgot, I forgot. I have like short term memory. <laughs> Goodbye, Victoria College. It was a pleasure. So now we are at the Philosopher's Walk, a little pathway right between the law building and Trinity College. It's a little jam because uh, I don't think a lot of people know about this one and it's really nice to come here especially during the warmer weather um, it's kind of like a quiet place if you want to just have time to think and I guess enjoy the sounds of nature and sometimes cars <sighs> maybe not cars but right back there is the ROM so it's in between the ROM here's Hoskin Avenue the law building and Trinity College So why exactly are we here? Okay, so the next point I want to talk about is mental health. That's another huge, huge problem here students face. Um, so campus, there's a lot of resources, 
at the same time I, I still don't think there's a lot to be honest I don't think there's a lot of resources I think there's you can go to the mental health wealth and health and wellness center um, health and no the health and wellness center you can go there you can also have the there's these numbers that we get that you can call if you want to talk um, I went to both I think it could be improved <laughs> I wanted to sit here and say wow we have all these resources and everything but when I went when I called the number it was weird and I felt like they weren't really helping they were busy trying to find my details like how old are you and everything and then they were saying like I know it's important for statistics so they know but I don't I, it never helped but I guess I shouldn't be here saying don't try I think you should try um, there's also the health and wellness they had these counselors I don't like the campus counselors to be honest I never wanted to come back after two visits um, not that I hate them it's just it didn't feel like human to human contact and at that point it still felt like a person to a system <laughs> like one of the times I went in for, uh, for the first time ever like a counselor it's my first time ever right and the real reason why I was there is I wanted to talk but I didn't want to say that it's embarrassing to say I want to talk about me <laughs> uh, to me it's embarrassing I wanted them to 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 glean that off of me and, and, and feel or ask questions that will plus I was assessing do I trust this person I'm not about to pour my heart out to this person like she would ask questions and, and, and I would be in the gray area because I can't I don't even know the answers I'm trying to trying to assess myself and, and, and come to it and, and then she 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 it felt like it was kind of rude-ish not like in the mean attitude way but more like in the this is a system and we're trying to get the information as accurately as possible do you have this or that and so I was forced to be like yes or no why are, and then when they came to the part why are you here I, I, I gave them a fake answer that's close kind of close to the actual real thing and I know I should have just been like direct but when you're talking to somebody about your problems like you want to you want to first know that someone you can trust and secondly you wanna, I'm losing my train of thoughts oh I forgot what I was gonna say there's two points I swear there was you also want to be reassured that you're not going to be judged so there's a lot like you're you're the one who's vulnerable when you're coming into seeing them so you think that it would be much more welcoming or more kinder or more understanding because sometimes people like me are not direct I it, it, and before anyone can complain and say you should have been like direct it's hard being vulnerable um, I had a different, much different experience when I was in exchange and I got to talk with a counselor there. That one, she asked me questions, she was so warm, she, she, she wanted to know more. Whenever there was some, I think something I wasn't really clear about, she, she, want, she asked me so she wanted to detail and that I appreciated that more because it sounded like she actually cared about me and I wish there was more of that. Uh, so I guess all, all I'm trying to say is use what you have here but also do what you can to take care of you because at the end of the day when nothing else has your back the only thing or the only one that time and time again that has your own back is you so you're above grades you're above like everything not life that's actually contradicting what i'm trying to say but you're above all these issues at work you're caring about because you're more important than them so care about yourself if you have to take time for yourself take it there's no guilt because it's you you're that you're your number one fan so you know hype yourself up so that's mental health if you have a time you should really check out philosopher's walk one day <sighs> it's closed right now because it's still the break but if you are here during the schools open this is uh, the trinity college's courtyard or the quad you should really come here because it's really beautiful it's also another amazing quiet space there are two quads that i love to visit and this is one of them but unfortunately it's closed right now let me in let me in goodbye philosopher's walk as much as i'd love to be here when actually i don't because i'm tired of being on this campus it's on to our next point So we are 
here for a specific reason. Come on, let me tell you about it. It's actually open. Yay! Yes! Because you can hear the piano upstairs, so I had a feeling it would be open. Um, why we're here now is to talk about social life. Uh, I remember reading this quote from a U of T student saying that they, lived, they were here for four years and never made, made a friend. And that's so true. Because you should go meet people. Everyone has this student culture, study, study, study. And the campus doesn't always make it easy to, to make friends. So a lot of people I've spoken with have also said that it's hard for them to make friends in classes because of the competition-based culture around UFT. By the end of my fourth year, I even started questioning what is friendship, and it's sharing your pain and talking, and there's different types of friendships I've come to learn, but the type that you would make in a class is sometimes kind of superficial because it's very competition-based and you never truly open up with another person. It's so beautiful. So if you want to know what types of friends, um, I'll link below School of Life's video. It'll give you a better understanding of what friendship means and what you're looking for. If I had to say if we're on campus or what on campus is my favorite part, it's Heart House for sure, for sure. And it ties in with the whole social life aspect that I'm talking about because one of the biggest problems is people don't have social lives when there are students here. Um, and Heart House is one of the buildings that was made so purposely for students to to anything non-academic in a community, a place where people could could, could meet and, and do things that are non-academic related. And I think that's beautiful that there's a space dedicated to that. It has a lot of information like like sport-wise, what classes there? Oh, and there's also clubs. Change <laughs> classes. So one thing that a lot of students go through is that they spend their whole entire years focusing on their studies because why not? It's it's why you're there, and also it's something that's killing you mentally, like stressing you out, and, and you want to give it your all because you're looking for opportunity. You want to do well, so you. That makes sense, but a lot of the times people neglect the social aspect of relaxing and having fun and everything, learning something else that's not academic related, and that sometimes feels illegal. I don't know why, but it feels like you shouldn't be doing that things for fun, which is ridiculous. You won't know who you are as a person if you're not doing things for fun. But just because you're doing all these assignments, you never wanted to do them anyways, the assignments. That doesn't say who you are. Those are just things that you were given to, and it's giving you a purpose because you have to do these you have to do this program and suddenly that's the purpose um, but figuring out who you are requires you to actually get out of the, your way figure out try what you're interested in see what it what it's like just for fun isn't that crazy for fun and um, it's also a good way to meet people because you're not meeting in the aspect of of just studying and working, I don't, I don't think it's a good way, <laughs> maybe for some people, but from my experience, like, all you ever do is just talk about school work and everything like that, and it's not helpful. What was I going to say? I lost my thoughts. When you're doing things for fun, and you're doing it with a community of people, that can, like, you're working on a passion project with other people, for example. That gives you an opportunity to actually grow friendships, meet people. So I, I really recommend people going um, out of their way to actually try and new activities. Like the gym is here too, you know? I come here, I used to come here mostly for th on Thursdays. They have get crafty, they had board games. You, did, you, did you know board games is a really good way to meet people? Like you can't play a game by yourself, but you can, it doesn't, it's not weird when you say, can I join you? Like when you see people are about to finish a game around, and you just say, can I join you? It's not weird at all. And you're accusing them of being spies and stuff. That's not weird. <laughs> it's fun. You're meeting them and ha you're happy and you're meeting them doing something that makes you happy. It, 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 if you, I mean, I'm not 
I'm not like a friendship guru. I, I don't really have that many friends. But if you want to feel like you're part of a community, one of the ways is by actually attending things like this, like coming to here, enjoying the activities, going to the gym, because sometimes when you go to drop-in programs, you see the same people over and over again. Why not say hi, you know? Because they, they, they see you, you see them. You start seeing familiar faces that are not within school. And academic-wise, it's usually what people feel is the pressure because it feels like it's competition-based. Here, when you're doing things for fun, it's not competition-based. It's just pure fun. It's not illegal to have fun. That's one thing I want people to know. That's all. Did you know that downstairs, there's a gym? To the room on the end, one side beside the, re the reception. Um, there's a lot of events that happen for free for everybody. Like the Get Crafty, the board games like I mentioned earlier. Um, I don't know what else happens there. A lot of events happen here as well. Tuesdays, um, the last Tuesday of every month, there's a five buck lunch for students. Uh, just come with cash, pay, and you're like in this huge hall, dining hall kind of setting. So I'm trying to record this to show you what I'm talking about, but as I am doing it, there's this guy ranting in the corner, and I think he's mumbling disgusting, uh, effing disgusting, and um, I wasn't going to leave, but then he started coming closer to me, so... Hey, leave. Call the police. Get up, here. There are yeah, so I don't like conflict. Pride is a sin. You're like in this huge hall, dining hall kind of setting. You can also take that as an opportunity to talk to people. Look at me telling people talk to people and I'm afraid of talking to people myself. But I think every, like the point I'm trying to get across is that everything requires work here. It's not easy, it's not like suddenly people are gonna talk to you. Sometimes everybody's antisocial. So maybe it's you who has to start it, start the conversation. I think that's how it has to be sometimes. <sighs> Heart House is where I go to rest as well, but my day isn't over. I have one more point to share with you. So finally, I am for my last point. We're gonna talk about programs. Now I'm at Bayhan Center. I know I said I was gonna be in Cockler House, um, but it was locked. So I just wanna talk about programs briefly and then end off the video. So one thing I know about a lot of students, so if you feel like you're alone, just hear me out here. A lot of students switch programs, keep switching, and end up graduating sometimes with programs that don't, they don't actually align their interests with. Um, that's very common at UFT. Everybody's switching, even in their third, fourth years. I mean, that's why there's a lot of us finishing the fifth year some people even sixth year but for me it was mostly because i was taking programs where i thought i should i was thinking of it from a perspective of career and what i should be doing but i realized that you you should be going for things that you want to not that you should not that it's going to lead to career or if you do something just because you're doing it for the money you're just going to be doing the thing that you hate for how many years? 40 years? I don't know how long people live. You're doing that for the rest of your life when you're done, right? And you're doing something you hate, but you're getting money. It doesn't matter anymore. You're not enjoying it. Money won't mean anything to you. Yeah, like, I guess I don't want to get into... People are going to be like, yeah, but money's going to do this and this and for me, and money's going to help me a lot. And we're not trying to get into Maslow's hierarchy of needs or whatever. I'm just trying to say... Do things that you like just because you like them, not because you think you should. As soon as you say should, should is a negative word. It, it, it attaches like shame and attaches all these negative feelings to it and, and you build, like you hurt yourself with it. You could be doing something you love. Could is a possibility, you know? This is something else, me mixing two different, I, like I'm mixing, talking about programs and also talk about positive language. But yeah, I'm saying do the things that makes sense to you like you love not because you were good at it in high school I mean but as in you loved it 
follow the interest because it helps you get through with it and it also helps you do better. I was studying sciences and I realized towards my fifth year, uh, fourth, fifth year, that I actually hated it. I only did it because I thought I should and I thought it would sound like a really good story. Oh, this girl, she was struggling all throughout and now look at her, top-notch scientista. No. When I actually sat down and thought about it, I realized that I like to do writing, I like art, I like making videos, I like anything artsy, not sciencey. So pay attention to what you want. Um, and never be afraid to constantly check in on yourself and say, does this make me happy? Am I doing what I like? Like check in with yourself for once in a while and connect with the, the happy feeling, not forcing yourself, not saying, I will learn to love it. No, don't learn to love it. If you, you cannot fake interest, okay? You cannot fake interest. You can, you can find an interest in something and discover that you never had, but you cannot fake or force an interest. So, I highly, highly recommend you just taking whatever you want. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for today. I don't know what else I can say. I'm all over the place, but I hope this was helpful. If it was, like. And subscribe if you're actually more interested in talking about your purpose and interest and everything I wrote a blog post and I'll link it below check it out um, I need to clarify when I say a lot of students it's usually because I, first of all I worked as a mentor so I heard a lot of people I worked with and also other mentor people they worked with uh, the, the, their mentees stories um, also I speak with other people who were my friends, my cl my classmates, and everything, and so I'm 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 when I say a lot of people, it's just from my perspective of the people I spoke with, and the communities that I work with, um, and it's a lot of people. <laughs> so that that's it's not like me talking to one or two people. It's a re reoccurring theme around campus. No matter who I speak with, there's this reoccurring theme, and this all this video is mostly tackling all of those.